I guess one disgrace just wasn't enough. Why have one disgrace when you can have two? Hell, it seems like the past week or so at the Olympics has been filled with nothing but disgraceful moments. At this rate, female sports will no longer exist in the next five, maybe ten years. Well, let me correct that statement. In the next five or ten years, female sports will still exist. There just won't be any actual females competing in them. Guess it kind of makes sense when you think about it. Let's look at this purely from the perspective of the Woke U College of Business. Historically, women's sports have struggled. They have struggled to draw ratings on television. They struggled with attendance. They struggled for relevance. More importantly, they have struggled to generate revenue, profit. When the Bravado Barbie was known as the Bayou Barbie and she was playing basketball professionally at LSU, Angel Reese won a national title. But even with their success that season, the women's basketball team at LSU, they still managed to lose millions of dollars. And don't even get me started with the losses in the WNBA dump. If the WNBA was actually considered a business, it would hold the record for most decades without turning a profit. Fortunately, though, for the dump, they're considered a charity. So whether or not they are making pesos doesn't really matter to their primary subsidizer because the NBA pays less in taxes by writing off all the losses. But if we're a student at the Woke U College of Business and we have been given the impossible assignment of making women's sports profitable, what is one of the fastest and easiest ways to make that happen? You know what? We haven't done this in a while. Let's go ahead and put on our woke cats so we can properly think like a wanker spanker. Now, make sure you're utilizing the filter here on the side so you can filter past the thoughts of supersized cucumbers traveling on the caboose, past the dozens of grinder profiles that you're thinking of swiping on, past the fantasies of Rachel Levine, winning woman of the year. We want to focus directly on making women's sports profitable. What is the fastest and easiest way to make that happen? Well, with the assistance of our woke cat, we come to the conclusion that having men pretending to be women competing against actual women is the only solution. And what a brilliant solution it is. If you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at KC underscore BTL84. And let's go ahead and get to the sponsor for today's video, my good friends over at Red Revival. You know... With everything that has happened over the past month or so, the failed attempt on Donald Trump, Cam Harris being nominated almost for president without receiving a single vote, I think we can all agree that America needs a revival. One of my favorite things about our sponsor today, Red Bible, it's their tagline, Revive America. You can see it back there on the shirt. Isn't that what this country desperately needs? A revival? Red Vival is a colorful, patriotic brand that offers a variety of options. If you're into hunting, you can go with the camouflaged hats. Red Vival offers a variety of unisex t-shirts. And just to be clear, when Red Vival says unisex, that does not mean they are designed for those questioning their gender. It just means the shirts can be worn by both men and women. They offer a variety of unisex t-shirts with different illustrations of the American flag. Now, this is one of my favorites right here. It shows Isaiah 6, 8, which is a passage from the Old Testament where God is asking who he should send. Isaiah responds, send me. Isn't that the same thing our brave men and women in the military are saying every single day? Send me. Red Vival is a proud veteran-owned business who donate 10% of each sale to various military charities. So, support our military veterans. Click the link in the description below. Use my promo code BTL10, BTL10. Receive 10% off your first purchase with Red Vival. Earlier this morning, Svetlana Staniva from Bulgaria saw her Olympic dreams vanish. Svetlana lost her boxing match to Lin Yuting from Taiwan. After the fight, Svetlana refused to shake hands with her opponent. Well, that doesn't seem like very good sportsmanship to me, or in this case, good sportswomanship.
I don't want to be convicted of the crime of misgendering, so it's extremely important that I remember to use proper pronouns, even when it doesn't really make sense. <laughs> but maybe there's a logical explanation as to why Svetlana didn't shake hands with Lynn Uteen. Perhaps she's like Howie and Howie, Howie Mandel and Howie Stern. Maybe Svetlana is afraid of germs, so she didn't want to shake hands. But that doesn't make sense, right? Because more germs were exchanged during the fight than would be exchanged during a simple handshake. Maybe it was a cultural difference. I've never been to Bulgaria. Hell, I could not locate Bulgaria if it was the only country on the map. Maybe in the Bulgarian culture, handshakes are considered to be inappropriate. Or maybe, just maybe... Svetlana Staneva refused to shake hands with her opponent because she felt like Lin Yu Ting should not have been her opponent to begin with. Instead of bowing her head in defeat, Svetlana Staneva stood in the middle of the ring and displayed the latest universal sign for women. Having your fingers form an X like this, that is the latest trend that shows you support women's sports. Now you would think, you would think, the mainstream media in America would be fully supportive of this movement. I mean, this is the same media that has been trying to convince us for years that the WNBA is real basketball. This is the same media that's been trying to convince us for years that the women's tournament in college basketball is called March Madness. This is the same media that supported Megan Rapino and the group of activists on the U.S. women's soccer team in their fight for equal pay. This is the same media that supported Megan Rapino and her group of activists in their fight to be given money from men they did not earn. But the media, they're not supporting Svetlana Staneva, just like the media didn't support Angela Carini when she lost to the other questionable boxer at the Olympics, Amin Khalif. The media, they can't support these women. No, no, no. You see, these women aren't marginalized enough to receive the media support. They have been out marginalized by Lin Yu Ting and Amin Khalif. According to the media, both of those boxers represent progress. And they represent progress because they possess XY chromosomes in the Olympics. They're allowing them to compete against women. Now, I am not a biologist. I didn't receive a PhD in gender studies from Woke U. But in my 39 years on this earth, the only people I know that possess XY chromosomes have the ability to pee standing up. This past week, the mainstream media, they have went into overdrive trying to defend the Olympics' decision to allow Amin Khalif and Lin Yu Ting to compete against females in boxing. Now, for those that don't know, both boxers were disqualified last year by the International Boxing Association for allegedly having XY chromosomes. Now, one of the leaders of the IBA, they said something to the effect of, they are trying to trick us by pretending to be women. I have seen some in the American media blaming the Russians for this allegation. It's the Russians, damn it! It's Russian collusion part two! They are colluding against these women because they don't want them to succeed. I highly doubt Vlad Vlad gives a shit about these two boxers. Some in the media are claiming that Amin Khalif and Lin Yu Ting were assigned their female genders at birth. It says female on their birth certificate. Oh yeah? Hmm. Well, uh, I looked down the list of people I trust. The mainstream media did not make the list. Let me ask you something. If it says female on the birth certificate, how come that hasn't been released? With all the controversy, with all the backlash surrounding these two boxers, why hasn't that been released? Why hasn't anything been released that proves their gender? Well, Casey, what about the passport? It hasn't been released. And it doesn't have to be their birth certificate. Be a driver's license. Could be a friend or family member coming out to defend them. Could be old pictures. Why hasn't something, anything been released that proves the people who are outraged over this wrong? 
The boxing coach for Svetlana Staniva, he took the allegations a step further. According to the Washington Post, when her coach was being interviewed after the fight, he was holding up a sign that said, I'm XX, save women's sports. But that was not the controversial moment. I'm going to read this quote verbatim. You tell me in the comments below, how you comprehend these remarks. Now, this quote, it is coming from Reuters. You could see that the representative from Taiwan did not want to fight. She was playing dirty as hell. The very first round was an official warning for an elbow. And these circus acts when she fell, I am indignant at the fun fair that is taking place. They had decided to make them champions and that's it. Um, for starters, it was nice to see the coach abiding by the woke commandments. He made sure to use proper pronouns when referring to Lin Yuting. But it's that last sentence that caught my attention. The fight ended in a unanimous decision, meaning the winner was selected by a group of judges. My understanding of what Svetlana Staniva's coach said was, the fix was in. How else am I supposed to take they have decided to make them champions? How else am I supposed to comprehend that? It sounds to me like he is accusing the judges of being biased. Sounds to me like he is saying boxing at the Olympics ain't on the up and up. It ain't legit. Now, I didn't watch the fight, so I don't know, but that is a very, very heavy accusation to make. What do you think? Did you guys watch the fight? Does this accusation from the coach have any merit to it? Do you think the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, do you think they influenced the judge's decision? You tell me. Sound off in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share the video. Appreciate your support. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com and I'll see you guys tomorrow.